Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. And I'm also very quiet, because it's late at night, and I don't want to be too loud. <laughs> because, yeah, the NA side decided to throw in a mystery banner that I, I came out of nowhere. I guess Super Ryan and Ibuki's back, <laughs> so I'm going to be talking about them. And that's going to be today's video. I had to completely, I already had dead done another video, and now I'm going to have to scrap that entire video because it didn't come with the idea that something like this would happen so fun let's get back into this one so i can go back to relaxing so part two chapter five 5.5 5 memorial pickup summon this wasn't in the jp version of the game which is why i wasn't i was extremely surprised to see it come out of nowhere in this you'll be able to get um You'll, you'll be able to summon for Super Orion and Ibuki Doji, uh, as well as the uh, four star, four yeah, they're called four stars, the SR uh, Donzo and Shiron. Looks like Shiron's gonna be with Ibuki and uh, Donzo's gonna be with uh, Super Orion. Cool. And this is the, what the schedule is looking like. I'm gonna assume two different banners, but they're gonna be starting with Super Orion on the 28th. And then they will be 29th, 30th, and then on the 31st, then they'll bring out Ibuki. And they'll basically kind of go like that until, I guess, June 2nd. Cool. So, in terms of, oh, I guess the other, because I can't look at the unit details, but there's also craft essences attached to this. So you'll be able to get, um, potentially get one who wishes for her salvation, witchcraft, rhythm birth, and royal presence, which isn't really anything more to say. And yeah, I'll go into the five stars now, because this is kind of the two big ones. I think Donzo is story locked, so if you're a big fan of Donzo, um, and you're not interested in waiting two years for when she'll be tied to an event banner, you can definitely try for her here. I have Donzo, I really like Donzo. I don't think Donzo is very good, but that doesn't mean that uh, it's not less any less valid when it's a character you like. And then we have Shiron, who I think is not story locked. I think he's just a regular unit. At least I think, I actually don't know fully. I do have him, and now I'm curious to know if he's limited or not. But anyway, let's get into the actual five stars. Starting with Ibuki, because she's a saber here. Uh, yeah, Ibuki Doji, she's a saber. One quick, two, one arts, and three busters. She, so she is a buster gorilla. Her active skills are physical strength of natural surroundings A+. Plus. Increase on attack for three times, three turns. And charges on NP gauge. The attack up is 40% and the MP is 50%. This kind of sucks, but eh, three attacks, three turns isn't too bad. And it does come with an MP charge, which is nice. Second skill, 8 channel surging waves B. It increased the buster performance for 3 turns, and then it increased the defense for 3 turns, and then just gained some crit stars. 20 crit stars, 30% buster, and 30% defense. Not bad, and a 5 turn cooldown, and this is also a 6 turn cooldown. Her third skill, Defiled Fingertips A. Seals 1 enemy's NP for 1 turn, increases your own critical damage for 3 turns. Increase own damage against the undead enemy for 3 turns, 50% to 50% for both. On a cooldown of 6. Her passive skill is Magic Resistance A, Writing B+, Dragon Kind, and Snake God Essence. Her pen skill is a increase against the ruler enemies, which is a very random thing for a saber to have. And her Noble Phantasm, which is a Divine Sword, Kusanagi no Tachi. It's a 4 hit buster, ignores invincibility for 1 turn, activates first, and then deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies. And then she also reduces uh, buster, resistance, buster resistance for 3 turns. The damage is 300% and MP level 1. MP level 5 is 500% and the buster resistance is 20% at overcharge 1 and the final overcharge it is 40%. And yeah, that's Ibuki. I really like Ibuki. I think a lot of people end up not liking Ibuki. She had the unfortunateness of being released right before Muramasa. <laughs> And now she has another unfortunateness of being re released again right before anniversary, um, which is unfortunate. 
uh, timing wise because it's a uh, it's hard to justify her over better characters but at the same time I really do like her I've been using her a whole bunch since I've gotten her for farming stuff she's able to especially on hands I can trust her enough with her power to be able to combine and kind of completely charge them I do wish she had some kind of a buff mainly to her noble phantasm just because this ignore invincibility I think I would prefer it if she just removed all buffs um, because she does deal damage that ignores defensive buffs, but wouldn't it just be better if she just removed all defensive buffs in general instead of just ignoring them? What's better than ignoring them actually being gone? But yeah, she is a buster, so she is going to be, um, supported by the new buster types. This second skill being 5 turn cooldown. All of hers are in range for the skill to be helpful, which is nice. Yeah, I really like Ibuki. I'm a big fan of her. I'm glad I have her. So if you're a fan of her and the way she looks and the witch she does, I would say go for it. But I think for the vast majority of people, they're pretty okay with skipping. And I should say that if you're a fan of Ibuki and you want a strong Ibuki, Summer Ibuki is coming in a year. And that is, without a doubt, the best version of Ibuki. <laughs> but, you know, nothing wrong with having both. I plan to have both, so who am I to judge you? Next. Okay, this is very good bait. Super Orion. This man's insane. This is borderline on me saying Arjuna Alter. They're not, they're, they're very sneaky releasing two very good Buster dudes. <laughs> Just before some Buster support is about to be released in the game. Super Orion. He's one quick, one arts. Three Buster, another Buster Gorilla. He's maybe the most Buster Gorilla of any Buster Gorilla. Mm. Yeah, I'll go with that because he is built like a man made of mountain. Um, his after skills, his stout art of, of brutality B plus, increase on Buster performance for one turn, increase on damage against wild beasts or demonic enemies for one turn. The Buster up is fifty percent. <laughs> The wild demonic wild beast or demonic damage is up by is 50%. His second skill is Pressure of the Moon Goddess EX. Grant self gut status for one time three turns. Increase on attack for three turns. And grant crit stars. 3000 HP, 20% attack, and 20 crit stars. Nice. Bowman of the three stars. Increase on attack absorption for three turns. Grant self on attack activation buff for three attacks, three turns. Increase on crit damage for one turn after attacking with buster cards activates first. The absorption up is f f uh, 500% and the crit damage is 100% and the cooldown is 5. Independent action EX, uh, Blessing of the Sea God and Curse of the Scorpio are his passive skills with Curse of the Scorpio being a demerit, which is increase the damage, uh, increases poison damage on self by 20%. His pen skill, his third one, is an increased attack against other archer enemies. His rank B noble phantasm is arts, which is the Artemis Hognas Moon Goddess Innocent Affections. Ignores invincibility for three turns. Increases on attack for three turns. Grants self debuff immunity for three turns. Gain 10 crit stars every turn for three turns. The attack up is 30%, 40% at level two, oh no, at level five it's 50%. Then he also increases his own crit damage for three turns. <laughs> It's 100% crit damage at overcharge of 1, and if you somehow are able to get him to the final charge, it's 200%. And that is Super Orion. This man is stupid. And it, this guy feels like a mistake when you're using him. He is so crazy powerful. I have Super Orion. I'm a big fan of my Super Orion. I don't use Super Orion for everything, because he makes things too easy. <laughs> It is insane what how they built this man. He's crazy powerful. He's crazy strong. I've been able to go into situations where I feel like I shouldn't be able to win with this guy, and he's able to beat it pretty easily. I don't think I've ever actually lost after using him in any capacity. Um, he's just insanely busted. He's insanely good. He is every single bit. If you're especially if you're someone who's a big fan of this, like beating entire fights with just one servant, he feels like he's built to just do that. He doesn't really need that much assistance. He is his own assistance, and then if you just have other things attached to him, it's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, this is 100% bait. 
is he better than any of the other dudes that are coming up? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> it's kind of hard because you can't actually like put two and two together and say like, you know, what's better, a support or the dude who's actually doing the damage. What I can say is that I don't have a single buster support at all. I don't have Merlin. I have only like mid-tier ones, which it's like, oh yeah, they guess they can do that if I wanted to, but they don't. Um, and I've been able to use Super Orion and his single fist deals more damage than some dude's noble phantasms. It's stupid. This man is dumb. So if you are tempted to summon for him and go for him, I don't blame you. He's extreme. There's only so many times I could say he's extremely good. He's my second best archer and the reason is is that my first best one is an MP5 Summer Artoria. If she did not have MP5, Super Riot would be better. And even then, um, it's only because her NP does like 2 million damage and she has this, the, the aidingness, the help of uh, her supports in Castoria. My Super Orion is the second best without any form of support and I can't wait to actually try him when I have Vich and I have uh, hopefully Oberon. I will try for him, but I doubt I'll be able to get him. But if I am able to get both of them, then it just sounds like it'd be pretty easy. GG. But actually, fun enough, I don't think it would work very well with Oberon, because Oberon is based off of NP damage, I think. And he doesn't really do NP damage. Kind of does. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll double check on that. Don't feel, don't correct me on that. Don't worry, I'm looking it up myself. <laughs> you don't have to tell me anything. Uh, but yeah. Good luck. I can understand if people are tempted and they summon this is hard bait to pass up but if you're super dedicated to that thankful i'm thankful i have literally both of these dudes if i didn't have both of these dudes i would be summoning on this banner it's just hard to like resist it i still kind of feel like summoning and i have super riot but an mp2 super riot sounds like it'd be pretty funny even though i don't think it's really needed in any capacity so yeah that's this banner uh be smart don't spend what you don't have, and if you're saving because you're like, I'm super crazy free to play and I care so much about these upcoming banners, hold true. That's the thing I can say. That's the only thing you can do to yourself, is that you should only do things that will make it so you won't feel regret right after you do it. And to be fair, a lot of people don't feel regret if they get a unit in one multi. But a lot of other dudes will start feeling regret if they have to go multiple multis in to get them. So, I'm just saying be wise. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of today's video. Let me go back to hopefully being able to upload this in time. Till next time everyone, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.